At 4.13 a.m. local time, the night sky didn't burn. It calculated 82 drones, 500 kilometers, three layers of Russian air defenses, all converging on one question. How does a swarm slip through a superpower shield? Radar operators froze. AI autopilots curved mid-air. By dawn, one of Russia's most guarded refineries was bleeding fuel and momentum. This was the strike that rewrote the rules of modern warfare. No jets, no missiles, just code, kinetics, and a flaw in the system. In the next eight minutes, you'll discover how Ukrainian drones tricked Pantsir defenses with AI. Why oil hubs like Krasnodar can be deadlier to strike than Russia's most advanced weapon systems. The stealth science behind low-altitude warflight. This isn't recycled TV news. It's a battlefield technology breakdown you won't find anywhere else. Subscribe now so you never miss the war stories the headlines can't tell. Did you know? The Krasnodar complex processes over 12 million tons of fuel per year, powering Russian tanks, jets, and warships. On this night, 82 Ukrainian drones targeted it, and 42 made it through. The way they broke through wasn't just daring. It rewrote the rules of modern aerial warfare. Here's exactly how they did it. The night over. Krasnodar burned like magnesium, a wall of sound not from bombs, but from the air itself, rolled over the refinery as Ukrainian attack drones sliced through the cloud deck at 420 knots. Below, Russia's most vital energy artery pulsed with liquid fuel, each pipeline feeding the Kremlin's war machine. Inside the mobile command van, operators watched the map bloom with hostile contacts. 82 blips, low and fast, crossing in from the Black Sea and Donbass. The radar's sweep couldn't decide which to lock, too many echoes, too much deception. In the sky, the lead drone's AI autopilot recalculated wind drift and infrared cross-section in milliseconds. It had one job, put 50 pounds of high explosive into the heart of Russian oil processing. No banners, no warning, just precision in the dark. The Krasnodar oil processing complex wasn't just another industrial target. It was a strategic blood vessel this site processed over 12 million tons of crude annually, feeding refined fuels to Russia's air bases in Crimea, armor divisions in Donetsk, and even the Black Sea Fleet. Its defenses were layered. Panzer S-1 point defense guns, Tor M-2 short-range SAMs, and overlapping radar nets linked to a regional command node. The refineries themselves were engineered to withstand fire, with flame suppression rigs, blast walls, and redundant pump systems. But the real threat was economic resilience. As long as Krasnodar ran, Russian fuel logistics could shrug off battlefield attrition. Ukraine's planners knew that a single night strike could ripple through Russia's war economy, stalling mechanized offensives, grounding sorties, and spiking civilian panic at home. The target wasn't just fuel, it was momentum. And momentum, in war, is worth more than oil. They weren't just flying machines. They were chess moves, each calculated to exploit an unseen flaw in the Russian shield. Some carried explosives. Some carried nothing at all. Yet every one of them had a role in the same silent equation. By the time Russian radar realized which were real and which were ghosts, it was already too late. And the strangest part? The deadliest drones in the swarm weren't even designed to kill. Reaching Krasnodar wasn't simply a matter of range. The refinery sat deep inside Russian territory, over 500 kilometers from Ukrainian launch points. Direct approaches risked detection by early warning radars in Bryansk and Rostov. Flying higher would give away the drones to radar sweeps. Flying too low meant burning more fuel and risking collision with terrain or power lines. And then there was the time on target problem. Hitting multiple refinery units, railway choke points, and gas processing plants simultaneously required split-second coordination. Too early, and the defenses would focus. Too late, and the window of surprise would close. Electronic warfare was a double-edged sword. Ukrainian jammers could blind Russian radars, 
but jamming too aggressively might trigger automated countermeasures, causing panzers to spray the sky blindly. Every variable was modeled, every failure mode imagined. And yet, there was one truth in mission planning. Once the drones crossed the border, physics and code would make the final decisions, not the human controllers in Kiev. The strike package wasn't just a swarm, it was a layered aerial ecosystem. Primary strike platforms, UJ-22 airborne drones, piston-powered, low observable, cruising at 120 knots with a 1,000 kilometer range. Payload, 20 Kilius warheads tuned for industrial machinery penetration. Long-range Beaver drones, composite airframes with low RCS skins, built for deep penetration and GPS-denied environments. Improvised loitering munitions, Converted commercial UAVs with thermal masking for refinery targeting. Navigation and targeting. Each platform carried a hybrid guidance suite. Inertial navigation fused with GLONASS GPS spoof resistance and AI-based visual recognition. The AI didn't just see, it could identify heat blooms from active distillation units and prioritize impact points in real time. Electronic warfare integration. An accompanying layer of decoy drones Broadcasting false IFF signatures drew panzer fire away from the main strike group. Some even mimicked the radar profile of incoming cruise missiles to saturate defenses. Power management. The most advanced drones adjusted throttle and altitude dynamically to reduce acoustic footprint. At 300 feet AGL over flat farmland, they were quieter than the wind through a tree line. By launch hour, Ukraine had assembled a fully autonomous multi-vector strike package. One that could outthink, outfly, and outlast the reaction time of human operators on the Russian side. 113 AM. Krasnodar's night shift was steady. Steam stacks lit against the dark, pressure gauges ticking. At 65 kilometers out, the first decoy drones flared on Russian radar. Panzer turrets slewed, sending tracer bursts into empty sky. Seconds later, the real strike wave, 42 drones, slipped through a gap in coverage. Riding the shadow of the decoy's radar bloom, the lead beaver dropped altitude to 180 feet, clearing a row of storage tanks. AI visual targeting confirmed. Unit 3 distillation tower, active, 95% thermal output. Target lock, probability of kill, 0.94, impact velocity, 410 knots. Kinetic energy, equivalent to a one-ton car hitting a wall at 1-200 nanolatrims. The first explosion ripped open the column, sending a jet of burning vapor 70 meters high. Within seconds, secondary fires bloomed as adjacent lines overheated. Three minutes later, simultaneous hits struck the rail yard and gas compressor station. By the time Russian fire crews mobilized, Krasnodar was already losing millions in fuel stock and seconds in war momentum. Thermal imaging from Ukrainian recon satellites showed three refinery units offline, with heat plumes dropping by 80% within 25 minutes. The rail yard strike severed a key supply artery feeding the southern military district. Analysts estimated the economic loss in the tens of millions, but the real cost was operational paralysis. Refineries like Krasnodar don't restart overnight. Damaged distillation columns require custom parts, specialized crews, and weeks, if not months, of downtime. For Russia's frontline armor and aviation units, that meant tighter fuel rations, reduced sortie rates, and an inevitable slowdown in offensive operations. The war economy had just been punched squarely in the lungs. For Ukraine, this was more than retaliation. It was economic warfare by precision. By targeting refineries instead of cities, Ukraine framed the strike as legitimate under the laws of armed conflict while hitting the Kremlin's most vulnerable flank, its dependency on fuel revenue. In Moscow, the political fallout was immediate. State TV scrambled to downplay the damage, even as satellite images went viral. On the battlefield, commanders facing fuel shortages were forced to choose. Feed the tanks or feed the jets. Either choice slowed Russia's momentum, and momentum, once lost, is rarely regained. War is no longer just fought in trenches and skies. It's fought in data streams, supply chains, and fuel lines. If you want more deep dive breakdowns of the tech, tactics, and strategies shaping modern warfare, subscribe now. Stay sharp. Stay informed.
Because in today's battle space, knowledge is the most powerful weapon you can carry. 